really good as well. But Jay Johnson is searching for some consistent offense from this from this LSU squad. Tigers at 16 and three on the season. Mississippi State at 14 and five. As we're ready for some baseball in Starkville. First one from Steven. Showing butt, pulling it back is Bingham. One ball, no strikes. Bingham, the center fielder, hitting 296. Couple of doubles, couple of home runs, 10 runs batted in. Mississippi State plays them pretty much straight up defensively as this one's popped up to the right side, and this one headed towards the seats and out of play. Yeah, Bingham's a guy that transferred to LSU from Arizona. It was a four year start at Arizona. He was a big. All Pac-12 performer last year and had a solid year, hit 350 last year, drove in 10 or hit 10 homers and drove in 58 runs for Arizona last year. And he's been solid for LSU to this point. Unique thing about uh, last night's game for LSU, they had base runners. They had opportunities. Is a swing and a miss on the breaking ball, so it's one and two now. They, uh, they left nine guys on base as far as men in score position. 0 for 9 last night with men in score position and with men on, just 1 for 12. So the opportunities were present, just could not capitalize against Mississippi State's pitching. Break it ball from Steven misses low. We're evened up at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Nolan Stevens, the reliever, the true freshman reliever for State last night, was the MVP of the game for me. Five and two-thirds in relief, only allowed one run and punched out Eddie. LSU could not do anything with him offensively. A little chopper towards first base. Hunter Hines has it. There's the first out of the ball game. Defensively for Mississippi State, downs and left, Isaac in center, Jordan is in right, the infield with Kohler and Mershon on the left side of the infield, Larry and Hines on the right side, Powell gets to start behind the plate. Yeah, that's kind of been the difference for Mississippi State is their pitching and their defense. You go back to last year, their defense was dead last in the SEC field at 964, with their 9.79 this year, so their fifth best mark. It's been a big improvement from a defensive standpoint. Tommy drives one out toward deep left field. This one has got a chance, and it's gone. Big fly for Tommy White. And LSU gets on the board. It's 1-0 here at the top of the first. Well, Tommy tanks in the house early for LSU. Been a little bit of a struggle, a little bit of a slow start for him. We saw him power a ball out last night for a home run out to right center field. This time he gets a ball just kind of down in the zone, and all he does is simply drop the head on it and a line drive out home run, his fourth long ball of the year. 15th run batted in. LSU not wasting any time striking early. 24th home run as a club. And Brady Neal takes outside for ball one. Neal, the right fielder, hitting 327. Three home runs, 14 runs batted in. Went over three last night, had a walk. See the miss downstairs. Two balls and no strikes. This is not the LSU club of last year, a club that hit 144 home runs, which was the second best mark in all of college baseball. LSU's not going to hit nearly that many home runs. This is a team that's built more around pitching and defense. Chopper up the line, that's foul. A two on count. Steven mentioned a, a junior transfer from Purdue, native of Williamsport, Indiana. 23 games, 14 starts last year. Third team, all Big Tens. That's in there for a strike to even a count of two and two. One nothing LSU on the Tommy White home run. Outside, full count. Jared Jones on deck. Shift is on with Neal at the plate. Three infielders on the right side. Time is called. You're a big fan of the uh, the pitch clock and and the way the the game is moving nowadays. Yeah. I you know, especially in MLB ball. I mean, we shaved, what, about 27 minutes off a game last mm -hmm. year. The average game was a little less than right around two and a half hours last year, which I think is a good pace. You know, still the college game, I, I think, could be improved a little bit more, but it, it's certainly the better place. Draw. Draws the walk. One out. Let's go back to that Tommy White home run, jumping on that first pitch. 
Yeah, we all know. I mean, Tommy White at NC State a couple of years ago, his freshman year, 27 long balls. And look, when he gets hot, he can stack up some home runs in a hurry. As we mentioned, been a little bit of a slow start for him, but homered last night, homered again today, and he's certainly capable of a lot of home runs. Jared Jones takes an off-speed pitch downstairs, and it's one ball, no strikes. Jones had one knock last night. It was a double, fifth of the year, hitting 295. That is sky to deep left field. This one is long gone, but foul. Nope, long gone, home run. Two run shot, it's 3 0. Well, just when I say it's not the team last year that hit 142 home runs, you get Tommy White with a long one and then a two run shot by the guy they called the Bear. Jared Jones powers out his seventh home run of the year, his 19th RBI, and LSU out of the gates quickly in this one. Shell shock Steven, the starter. And that was a big time poke, just hugging that line. Jones is seventh, now with 19 runs batted in. Well, Jared Jones, a freshman All-American last year. And if you remember last year, he started for LSU last year, but slowed down when SEC play got here. But that's just a ball just right in the heart of the plate. And you talk about getting every stitch of that one. Jared Jones got that one well out to left field. I mean, you're talking about six foot four, 250 pounds. And I believe he got every ounce of that one. Quick visit to the mound to make sure that Cal Stevens all right. Stevens with we talk uh, good about, numbers on his. Yeah, both of these pitchers, Victor, they're going to they're going to rely on their fastballs. That's what they do. Both of them throw a high percentage of fastballs more than not. And Cal Stevens, he's going to keep pumping it in there. And you kind of have to. I mean, you, I know you don't want to really get away from what your game plan was this early in the game, especially after two two big swings by LSU. This was chopped on the ground on the left side. Two down now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's about location for Cal Stevens, right? If you go look at the two home runs, they were kind of pretty hittable, more of the middle part of the plate. That was a really good two-seam fastball to Travinsky right there, kind of right in on his hands. He created a weak ground ball to third base. So that's what it is for Cal Stevens. It was one of our points about him today is his fastball command needs to be on point today against LSU. And he's going to have to throw a few off-speed pitches in there just to keep LSU honest as well. Josh Pearson looks at a strike. He's the left fielder for LSU. Holbert last night. One for four overall with a couple of runs batted in. Well, Victor, you know this. I mean, the first inning to me for a starting pitcher is always the most difficult one, right? I mean, you're trying to figure out what's working. What you had in the bullpen doesn't necessarily translate to the game mound. You know, you think, oh, I got a good breaking ball today, and all of a sudden the game begins. Because you can't create that adrenaline flow that you get when you stand on the game mound versus the bullpen mound. And that's why I think the first innings are always difficult to navigate for a starting pitcher. Especially when you're talking about conference play, too. Yeah, I mean, you could tell nerves. Nerves hit LSU pretty good last night. They've been a pretty good defensive team. They make two big errors last night. It cost them a lot of earned -earn runs, but Mississippi State was just better. They just took LSU to the woodshed last night. Count even up at two balls, two strikes. 3 nothing LSU, a couple of home runs. Wide a solo shot. Jones, a two-run shot. Certainly answering here early to uh, last night's loss. 2-2, two -two, breaking balls, chop foul. Good crowd last night, a little over 11,000. Another good crowd on hand at Starkville this afternoon, late afternoon start. What a beautiful place. Stark Vegas, one of my favorite places to visit. Breaking ball misses down and in. Full count. Braswell's on deck. 22 pitches thrown by Cal Stevens so far. Three, two, and that is up the middle. Two out base hit. So the line keeps moving for LSU. 
Yeah, Josh Pearson a couple years ago had a really good freshman year for LSU. Kind of backed up last year, kind of in and out of the lineup. Started at second base, made the transition this year from outfield into second base. But back in the outfield again today, so they're kind of using him in the infield and the outfield as well. Braswell takes a strike, top part of the strike zone. Had a one for three game last night, double and a walk. He's in batting 250. Three doubles, two triples, a home run, 13 runs batted in on the season. Junior transfer. Misses in tight. One ball, one strike. fouled off one and two yeah, Michael Braswell transfers in transfers into LSU from South Carolina where he was a two-year starter the two-way player his first year played shortstop closed a little bit just played shortstop last year for the Gamecocks one two fouled off again so he keeps his head bat alive yeah last year with South Carolina 255 drove in 23 yeah, and he actually led LSU in fall uh, batting average wise. Jay Johnson made some adjustments with him and felt like he was due to have a really good year. Now it's a got off to a good start, but still hitting 250 right now. Quick throw over. Pearson easily back. Well, the one thing that uh, is for certain for Mississippi State, their bullpen obviously is rested after. What Nolan Stevens did last night in relief. Uh, five and two thirds and picking up the win for them. Breaking ball got him swinging for the third out, but not before LSU strikes. Good so far. 13 to third, six hits, has not allowed an earned run. Only two walks and 21 punch outs on the year. It's a big arm. I mean, Victor, you talk about an arm from the left side. It's sneaky. The fastball will be up to 96 miles an hour. He hides it really well. He'll spin a slider and a curveball in there as well. Monty Larry behind in the count quickly, no balls and two strikes. The second baseman. 315. Couple of home runs, 11 runs batted in. He was the DH last night. Little chopper over the mound. Going to be a tough play with the speed of Larry. Milo still able to get him for the first out. Nice play by the young second baseman for LSU. Yeah, Stephen Milan did not begin the year in the starting lineup for LSU, but he has worked his way into that point. You can't deny it. the offense. It's been really good. Not a lot of pop in that bat, but he's going to hit some doubles. He can really create havoc when he gets on bases, and the defense has been very solid. That was a good play by him and a really good finish on the back end by Jerry Jones, who scoops it out of the dirt. Here's David Mershaw swinging first pitch. Lifts one out toward left center field. Moving over is Mac Bingham. He'll pull it away for out number two. Gage jump at his last start was against Xavier. Ten strikeouts at five innings of work. It has been uh, exceptional. In the early part of uh, the season, this one's a little break the ball, misses outside for ball one to Dakota Jordan. Speaking yeah, of Jay Johnson, exceptional. <laughs> Jay Johnson tells the story. He recruited Gage jump hard when he was at Arizona. Tried to get him to come to Arizona, just couldn't get him to come. Of course, he circled back. Jay got the job at LSU to Gage Jump. And Gage Jump came out of high school three years ago in California, was the number one left-handed pitcher in the entire state of California. That's what the scouts thought about him. Remember seeing and reading a lot about him. He went to Jay Sarah in Orange County, California. Excellent program. Highly touted. Yeah, he was drafted, what, in the 18th round his senior year by the Padres. Mm -hmm. Chose UCLA instead. Jordan lays off that high fastball. It's three and one. Dakota Jordan, huh? Coach Lim told us he's a baby Bo Jackson. That, yeah. That's a big statement. That is a big statement. <laughs> no doubt. He works the two out walk. Bulldogs get their first base runner of the ball game. Here comes Hunter Hines. 
Maybe Bo Jackson. That's, that's no pressure. No pressure whatsoever. Yeah. Bo, Bo, by the way, getting inducted, or will get inducted to the Royals Hall of Fame later on this year. That was announced just a couple of days ago. Best athlete I've ever played against, no doubt. I mean, Bo, ben, was, Bo was special. I think it, everyone says the exact same thing, whether it was a teammate or across the diamond, everyone says the exact same thing as Hines pulls that one foul. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, a lot of people say Deion Sanders, and I love Deion was a heck of an athlete. Anytime you can perform at the highest level in two different sports like Deion did, but Bo Jackson was just different, man. Like, it, it was when he would get into a ball, I mean, you saw it, it would go out of sight. He hit it 500 feet. He could outrun anybody on the field and just a special, special kind of guy. What could have been, right, had it not been for the injury. That's right. As a running back for the Raiders. And as it was, he was fantastic. Oh, one pitch. That's in tight. The loft speed pitch. Yeah, we can already see Gage Jump kind of changing what he's done. We talked about his high use of the fastball, 72% to this point. But I'm starting to see a few more breaking balls than what he typically throws early in the ball game. Good breaking ball there. And he's got two different breaking balls. There's a slider and a curveball. He'll use the slider a little bit more than the curveball. He does have a changeup, but he only throws that changeup about 1% of the time, so it's almost non-existent. 1-2 foul back. 93 on that last fastball. Gage Jump, not a big guy either. Just six foot tall, and look, that might be in spikes too. I mean, he's listed at six foot. <laughs> he certainly has an electric left arm, no doubt about that. That just missed in. Two balls, two strikes. Hunter Highs last night, two for five, couple of home runs, four runs batted in. 284 on the season, now with three home runs and 20 RBIs. 3 nothing LSU, bottom of the first. 2-2. Two -two. That's lifted out toward shallow right field. Milam going out, coming in, though. Making the play is Brady Neal for the third out. Obviously, but he's just one of those gritty kind of dudes, you know, comes from a place in New Mexico, and and uh, he's just a hard-nosed kind of kid. And it's kind of worked his way into that starting lineup. A baseball rat, basically, is what Coach Johnson described him as. He said he'd been on Milam since he was basically in seventh, eighth grade. Loved him as a player. And now a member of LSU's starting lineup. Alex Malazzo getting the start today behind the plate, number nine hitter. We'll shoot this one out to right field. It's a base hit. Yeah, so happy for Alex Malazzo. He's a, he's a young man that I coached in travel ball for five years, you know, years ago. He's a local kid in the Baton Rouge area, and it was always defense over offense. Like his defense, there's not many better than him behind home plate at framing and throwing out guys and calling a game. But offensively, he struggled his first two or three years at LSU, but he kind of found his way last year, and, boy, he is off to a good start. Came into this game hitting 381 offensively. Seventh start of the season for him. Back to the top of the order now, Mac Bingham. 0 for 1 as he grounded out in his first plate appearance. This one's out toward deep left field. This one's got a chance to get out of here, and it does. The long ball prevalent for LSU in the early part of this ball game. It's 5-0. We talked about Cal Stevens and him being able to throw that fastball, and he will continue to throw that fastball. The problem he's having right now, if you go back and look at the three home runs, they've kind of been in the heart of the plate versus where he typically is, which is on the outer and inner thirds of the plate. And, boy, Mac Bingham on time here. Take a look at this swing. Gets a fastball. You see it's supposed to be away. You see that ball run right back over the heart of the plate, and, boy, you talk about touching one right there. That ball deep out toward left center field. Bingham's third long ball of the year. And, boy, he knew it the instant it touched his bat. So White, Jones, and now Bingham with home runs in this one. Tommy jumped on the first pitch in the first inning. We'll lay off this one. It's one ball, no strikes. Home run for Bingham, his third of the year, now with 12 runs batted in.
center cut fastball take it for a strike. I'll give Cal Stevens credit though. He hadn't backed down from what he does at all. He just got to figure out a way to locate that fastball just a little bit better. He is not backing down at all. One, two. Upstairs. Now it's fouled back. What do you attribute that to? Perhaps a little too much adrenaline? Because sometimes obviously that could that could play a, a little bit of a role in, in mislocations, right? No doubt. I mean, look, every day is different for a starting pitcher. There's days where I am spot on with everything, and I can really locate and do what I want to do. Then a third of the time, you know, I kind of got my average stuff. Then a third of the time, I got below average stuff. So every day is a little bit different. You know, we saw Luke Holman start for LSU last night. He hadn't given up a run all year long. And four and two-thirds, they put ten hits on him and five runs, you know. And so – you can't always be perfectly on your game, but I love the aggressiveness of Cal Stevens. He's not backing down at all. This one out to center field near the wall and tracked down by Connor Heisen. Two down. Well, you can see Tommy White. He is starting to heat up a little bit. He's starting to find the barrel more and more. We talked to Jay Johnson the other day, and he said, look, Tommy White was rolling over a lot of balls early, and he said he's starting to be on time. He's starting to use the opposite field like he did so much the last couple of years, and there's another ball that's hit hard. Now it's a little bit low on Brady Neal, who walked and scored in the first inning. Bulldogs shifting on Neal with three on the right side. Shows, but why not? They're going to give you that. Open third base area. Yeah. Take it. Well, Brady Neal, Brady Neal doesn't play much outfield at all. Of course, he came up as a catcher last year, caught the first 26 games for LSU last year before he got hurt. But because of the bat, Jay Johnson wants him in that, in that lineup, and he's out in the outfield today. This one's lifted out toward left field, playable for Aaron Downs. And there's the third out. But uh, the long ball continues to be part of LSU's 21 SEC season. So... I don't know, Ben, I, I would say that perhaps there's a little pressure on Chris Lamonis to kind of turn things around this year. Oh, no, look, no doubt. I mean, expectations at, at Mississippi State are very similar to what they are at LSU. It, it is you're supposed to win. And, you know, it's been a, a rough couple of years. I mean, after going to the College World Series four, what, four times in eight years, and, of course, Mississippi State's been 12 different times to the College World Series and, and won the national title back in 21, you know. And it's a proud program. It really is. And the fans expect – winners at Mississippi State and so I think there's a, a little extra pressure on Lim this year coach Lim to get going he's he's done a tremendous job four, four years there he's been to two college world series and one them. but he's got to get going a little bit here but the good news for them is they're off to a really good start after stumbling out of the gates a little bit Connor Heisek works the uh, lead off walk you take a look at the uh, the records from year to year after the national championship here in 21 26 and 30, and then 27 and 26. And I mentioned the record in the SEC, which to me I think probably holds a little bit more water as far as if you're going to judge somebody, uh, considering how yeah. difficult this conference is and how good it is deep. Last thing you want to do is kind of roll into a couple of seasons where you're not in double digits at the very least in wins. Yeah, and you go back and look the last couple of years, their offense has been solid. It's kind of been middle of the pack. It's been more about the pitching or lack thereof and the defense. You know, it just hasn't been that good. This one off the glove of Milo. Goes into shallow center field. Moving to third is Heisek, and Aaron Downs is on board with a single. Stay with runners at first and third. Nobody out to start the second. Yeah. This is a very aggressive running team Mississippi State has, you know, and they're going to take an extra 90 whenever they can. Just a bouncing ball right up the middle. Gage jump can't get it. It goes off of the second baseman, Milam's glove, and when it kicks out towards center field, Isaac easily goes first to third. So here comes State all of a sudden, first and third, and nobody out. That's one of those plays, even if Milam does come up with it, I don't think he's got an out. The only thing you do is save 90 feet. It would have been a tough play for him. One ball, no strikes on Logan Kohler, senior third baseman. Transfer from Memphis. Oh, pop this one up to shallow center field. Calling forward is Bingham, makes the catch, no tag. One hop throw all the way to the plate. One down. 
Yeah, Bingham has mostly been playing left field for LSU. And he moves into center field. I think this is his first start in center field this year. It is. Pearson was in right last night, moves over to left. Paxton Clayton's kind of been the everyday center fielder for LSU, but he's struggled offensively out of the gate. So he's getting a day off. Bingham goes from left into center field. Runners at the corners and one out. Five nothing LSU here in the bottom of the second. Bryce Chance is the DH today. State's one of those clubs you better keep an eye on them when they get on the bases. I mean, they come in with 27 stolen bases. That's fourth in the SEC. They were fourth last year in the conference for stolen bases as well. One ball, one strike on Chance. Sophomore hitting 232. That's four doubles, a home run, and 10 runs batted in. Isaac at third downs at first, and a swing and a miss on the off speed. The breaking ball down. Jump showed a good breaking ball so far today. Fastball's been good. Falls in the dirt. And that will bring home a run for Mississippi State. Not much that Malazzo could do on that ball as it shot toward the mound area. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about for Mississippi State. They are uber aggressive on the base pass. And this ball didn't kick very far away. It wasn't kick 10 feet from home plate, but if you get the right lead down at third base and your momentum is going that way and you read the ball at a down angle, and that's exactly what Isaac did. He sees it, see him walk it up right there. That's perfect timing. Sees the ball kick away and easily scores on a ball that never got more than about 12 feet from home plate. Lead off walk comes around to score. Mississippi State's first run of the game. It's 5-1 LSU. Johnson making his first trip to the mound. Downs over at second. Still just one out. Two balls, two strikes on Bryce Chance. Full count. Number nine hitter Joe Powell, the catcher behind the plate today, is on deck for the Bulldogs. This one's out toward right field. Playable makes a catch is Brady Neal, and not moving on it is Downs at second base. I don't know if Downs thought maybe that ball was going to get over his head. Yeah, he stays at second base. Yeah, he doesn't have a stolen base this year, so I don't know how much speed he has. But Brady Neal, obviously a catcher, has a big arm out there, and he got to that ball pretty quickly and got it in. Powell comes up hacking first pitch. No ball to the strike on the senior. Transfer from both. Cincinnati. Both of these teams look like to me are uber aggressive at the plate right now. Why not? I mean, Gage Jump only had two walks coming in. And of course, Stevens only had four walks coming in. So both of them are known for throwing strikes. And I think that's kind of been the game plan by both of these offenses. Is, hey, go up and attack early if you get the pitcher looking for. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Five to one LSU. You know, the big question for LSU is how many innings can they get out of Gage Jump this year? Obviously, he's already thrown more innings this, this year than he did his first two years at UCLA because of the Tommy John surgery. So you wonder how many innings he can give them this year. Got him swinging on a high fastball. Third out is recorded. They're going to bring in Gavin Black. He's making his sixth appearance of the year. Six foot, 195 pounder out of Georgia in his second year. He's worked uh, five appearances. They've all been out of the bullpen, giving up six hits out of those five innings. He does struck out nine, giving up two earned runs and walked four along the way. Transferred from Northwest Florida State College. Boy, it's bullpen hard to guy keep for up them with everybody, year. isn't it? 
I mean, there's oh my so gosh. many transfers. It's like it's he never ending. But it is from year to year. <laughs> exactly. It is never. It's ending. crazy to me. I mean, it's crazy that we allow tran unlimited transfers. You can't do it in any NBA, NFL, and Major League Baseball. You can't become a free agent at the end of every year. But somehow in college sports, you can. Just makes it that much more difficult from a from a recruiting standpoint, especially not so much from the Power Five perspective, but uh, anybody else. That's why the mid majors you almost feel as if they're starting to become the JV for for a lot of these Power Five teams. That that's all they are, unfortunately, for them is they've become a feeder programs for the bigger schools, and that's where we are now. But you got to play Can the it? game. If you don't play yeah. the game, you, you're going to get left behind. You know, and that's kind of where we are now. If you like it Is or not, you got to play the game. I think there's definitely a fix. But but I don't know if the NCAA wants to go there or not, you know, but there's a fix. We're both of the same age, so that when we were in college, you transferred four year to four year, you had to sit out of you. That just missed outside, and it's a full count. That was a pretty good pitch. That was a really good pitch. Should have been called a strike. It looked like it caught the outside corner to me. Home plate umpire Ronnie Teague didn't think so, though. Here's the payoff. Breaking ball, and that misses low. Yeah, I tell you what, if I'm on the bump right now, I'm pretty upset because I got to have one of those two pitches. I mean, I thought the fastball could have been called a strike. This breaking ball. Now, Jones is a big guy, but it's not where he catches it. It's where it crossed home plate. It's hard for me to believe we had a side angle of that. And you can see Coach Lamonis is upset. As he should be. Yeah, I don't blame him for being upset there because I got to have one of those two. But look, that's where we are. Look, this is where we are in the college game, too. Like, the strike zone shrunk last year. It shrunk. Now, the umpires will tell you it shrunk because, you know, they were using the track man data to help more or less teach as a teaching tool. But also, umpires were being graded in some ways, too. And the umpires don't want to be called and be graded, you know, on pitches that are out of the strike zone. Because our typical strike zone, when you played and I played, and even up to about four or five years ago was, you know, a ball off the outside corner, a ball off the inside corner, a ball that was typically called a strike in the college game. It's not that way anymore. Like, it's turned into almost a double-A or triple-A strike zone. And yet, somehow, the offenses continue to get better and better. And this one's out toward left center field, hit well. Over at the track, near the wall, that is gone. Two-run big fly for Hayden Travinsky. 7-1 LSU. And if you thought Coach Lem was hot before, he's hotter now. Yeah, you can still hear him, and I'm surprised he's still in this ball game too because he is giving it to home plate umpire Ronnie T, and deservingly so. He is saying, you're my number one umpire, is what he's saying. You complete me, is what I read. As far as his lips are concerned. Nobody on. Nobody out. A walk. Disputed walk. And in the home run by Travinsky, his fourth home run of the season. I mean, would you not get the sense that Ronnie Teague, the home plate umpire, maybe feels as if he missed one or two calls? That's why he's giving Coach Lamonis so much rope as far as you know, berating him? That's the only thing I can think of. Because normally when you attack an umpire like that and you're that hard on him for a course of what's been a couple of minutes now, you typically don't stay around for the ball game. Breaking ball. Misses inside. It's two balls and a strike. Pierce of the left fielder had a single in his first A-B. 
I love Coach Lamonis. Like, I, I like a fiery coach. Jake Gotro's outstanding as well. Been around state a long time. A really good coaching staff. This was lifted in the air down the right field line. Tough play. Dakota Jordan calls everybody off. One down. Go back to Travinsky's home run. Well, Travinsky's got some big time pop. I mean, a big guy, fifth year senior. You can see again another missed spot. You can see the catcher. I mean, you see where Powell set up? Powell set up right on the inside part of the plate, but this ball is elevated, but it's right down the heart of the plate. Travinsky's one of those guys that he don't even have to really square it up to get it out of the ballpark. He's got that much pop in his bat. This one's lined towards short and caught by Mershaw. Two down. Four home runs the first three innings. Yeah, White, LSU Jones, came Bingham, in. and Travinsky. Yeah, what, LSU came in, what, with 23 homers on the year. That was 10th best out of 14 teams in the SEC. So LSU was really in the, in the bottom third when it comes to home runs. But so far today, four long balls. Steven Mile of the batter. Mile of saw one pitch in his second inning plate appearance and lined out to second. 0 for 1 for the switch hitting second baseman. Three balls, no strikes. Milo came in batting 350, three doubles, no home runs, 13 runs batted in. Run a little bit, four for four in the stolen base category. Three one is in there. Full count. Four home runs for LSU. Their season high is five. That was against Northern Illinois back on February 22nd. And a three two. Breaking ball misses. Second walk of the inning for Black. Puts a man on for the number nine hitter, Alex Malazzo. Johnson has done a fantastic job while at LSU. Winning it all last year. 54 win season. Well, Jay Johnson came from Arizona where he took the Wildcats, what, to two College World Series in five mm -hmm. years. And he said when he took the LSU job three years ago, he said, my goal is to bring LSU back to the forefront of college baseball. Well, it took him two years to do it. Two balls, no strikes. Malazzo with a single or run scored in the second. Gavin Black in relief of Cal Steven, who went two innings, gave up five runs all earned. Milam started to go. Throw back to first base, and he's back in there. The LSU is a club only stole 30 bases last year in the entire season, dead last in the SEC. They are at 18 already this year, so running a little bit more. Of course, when you're hitting 140 some something home runs like they did last year, I guess you don't want to run yourself. <laughs> it was more of the Earl Weaver uh, style of yeah. baseball. It is a three-run shot. That's it. And Black has no idea of the strike zone. That's the third walk he has issued in this inning. Back to the top of the order we go for LSU with Mac Bingham coming to the plate.
They got one for two. Ground out the two-run home run, third of the year. On conversation between Powell and Black. It's only a matter of time when you knew this LSU offense was going to get it going. Like I said, they had plenty of opportunities last night, just couldn't cash them in. Today, the long ball has been certainly prevalent in the first three innings. As Bingham takes the old backup slide piece in for a strike. Yeah, it's an offense coming into this game. We talked about it early. If you miss it, they've been really struggling. I mean, their last seven games coming into this one, they're only averaging about 4.9 runs per game. Check swing. I said he went around. Scott Klein, the crew chief, over at first base. No balls and two strikes. 7 1 LSU here at the top of the third. Breaking ball rolled foul. Runners at first and second. 0 oh, 2. That's in tight. And from a body language perspective, it doesn't look as if Gavin Black's having a whole lot of fun. Now, granted, I know he got squeezed on the couple of pitches, the very first batter of this inning. And I guess understand why Coach Lem was as hot as he was. You, you score one run on a wild pitch, you want to keep this game as close as possible. Did he go on this one? He did not. Well, I think as a pitcher, when you start to see balls fly out of the ballpark, right, it, you, all of a sudden you lose a little bit of your aggressiveness. And it's only natural to do that. You try to make the perfect pitch, and a lot of times it ends up being ball four. But LSU has not missed many mistakes. It seems like every time State has made a mistake over the white part of the plate, LSU's made them pay for it. Coach Lamonis is coming out. He's hot about something. I wonder if the conversation is about the pickoff. I think it has to be. I think it has to be. You know, and that's one of the rules this year they talked about a lot is it has to be a legitimate pickoff play. In other words, one of the middle infielders need to be going towards the bag and near the bag. You just can't turn around and throw the ball to kind of where the shortstop or second baseman plays. Now, to me, it looked like the second baseman, Amani Larry, was working his way towards the bag. The three two is down low so it was about the uh, the play at second base so black got charged with a ball that made it three two instead of two and two and that's why the runners were in motion there. And that's why coach Lamonas came out to have a conversation with the crew chief. That's the fourth walk issued by Gavin black here in this third inning and Tommy white will step up to the play with the bases loaded. First pitch in for a strike. One for two with that home run. Just missed his second in the second inning, taking it to the wall. He'll shoot this one into right field. There's a base hit. Scoring easily is Milo. Milazzo's being waved around. A throw from Jordan is up the line. Two run RBI. A single for Tommy White extends the lead to 9 1. 
Well, this is kind of what makes Tommy White so special. I mean, we talk about the home runs deservedly. So 27 his freshman year, 24 last year. But let's not forget, he hit 362 as a freshman, 374 last year, his first year on campus at LSU. And his ability to use the backside of the ball is what makes him special. Watch his hands go first. He just lets the hands go first. He doesn't try to go out and hook this ball at all. Let's the ball get deep and just powers it the other way. And Tommy White figured out a couple years ago he can hit the ball just as hard the opposite field as he can to the pool side. And that's why the batting average stays so high for Tommy. Gavin Black is going to be done here. He'll face eight batters. He's going to face Brady Neal, ninth man to step to the plate here in the third inning. Bingham at second, Tommy White at first base. And why not swing first pitch? No balls and a strike. Neil walked and scored in the first inning. Hit a fly ball to left in the second. And that, believe it or not, at 88 miles an hour, that was the changeup. Yeah, he's got a good changeup, yeah. You can see it kind of tails down and away from the left-handed hitter. That's supposed to be, his, according to the scout report, that's his best pitch. Upstairs, one and two. Well, I just, I just love the environment at Mississippi State. To me, it's one of the most beautiful ballparks in the entire country. The way they built it. And of course, you always know about the left field lounge. I mean, it's been around forever in two days. It is one big party. Dead ball. Ground ball. Over to the right side, and they'll go to second base, get the force out of Tommy White, but not before LSU strikes for four out of the third inning. LSU starter Gates Jump having to uh, wait a little bit. I'm, I'm sure, just like any starting pitcher, loves the offensive help. Face the top of the order. It's 1 2 3 for Mississippi State. Larry Mershon and Jordan. Yeah, it's difficult, though. You know, I mean, when you sit on a bench for 26 minutes like he just did, I mean, you got to get up and get moving around. If there's some space in the back, maybe play a little bit of catch to try to stay loose if you can. Of course, it's always a good thing when you're sitting on the bench for a while. That means your team is putting up some runs for you. Also, it can take you a little bit of time to kind of get back in the groove as well. Does it put you in the mindset of trying to throw, just come out and throw some fastballs to kind of get a feel for the mound once again? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I mean Always, when, I, when I was on my game, and I think most pitchers like this, I, I like to get right back out there again. You know, you, again, you don't mind a close game. You like to run support too, but I like to just take the ball, maybe get a run or two, and go right back out again. It's difficult when you get 26 minutes in between. Our SEC Network Baseball Game of the Week is the series finale between number eight, Florida, number two, LSU, and Baton Rouge. Coverage begins Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern and 2 Central. Mershon takes downstairs. That's the third walk, by the way, given up by Gage so far. Yeah, only had two coming in of the season. Mershon hit a fly ball to center field the first inning. Mershon last night. I tell you what, when he gets on base, he can fly. Eight for eight in stolen bases this year. He looks really good at the shortstop position. One, two, way outside. Nice job by Alex behind the plate to just nag that ball. Break the ball gets away. Well, you can see, I mean, sitting down for 26 minutes has definitely affected Gage Jump. He is not nearly as accurate as he was the first couple of innings. Second wild pitch that he's delivered. The first one resulted in the Bulldogs getting their first run in the second. New baseball being put into play. 
because you know the turf probably scuffed up that baseball. <laughs> and I love how the baseball goes right into the home plate umpire's bag. 3 2. Urshaw chops this one, kind of fighting it off, and goes foul. Yeah, it's all AstroTurf around home plate. Here at Beauty Noble. Another 3 2. A little chopper to the left side. Braswell has it, retires. Mershon, there's out number one. Larry unable to advance. Picks up Dakota Jordan. Jordan walked in his first plate appearance. So chop toward third base. Tommy White off balance throw and he got him. What a play by Tommy White. Off balance and everything. Two down. Now who said who says you can't play third base, Tommy White? Obviously, it's bat over defense all day long with Tommy White, but he has worked really hard on his defense. He had a couple of nice plays. He's playing deep where he should be off of the coach Jordan. Comes in and watch him quickly get the ball out of his hand. I mean, right on the money over the first base to Jerry Jones. Nice play by Tommy White. Made a nice White one last night on an in-between yeah, hop as well. That's right. He's projected to be a first-round draft pick. I, I think pro scouts are just trying to figure out right now where he's going to play in pro ball. You know, obviously the bat works for Tommy White. The question is, can he stick at third base? And that gets away. Lazo can't find it. And, well, for a second, it looked like Larry's going to try to score from second base. I'm not sure what happened but with Malizo there, the catcher for LSU. Like, I don't know if he got crossed up. I don't know if this ball bounced or not. I don't think it bounced. We'll get another look at it. No, he's expecting curveball. He just boxed it, and he thought he had it, and it just kind of squirted to the dugout. And I really thought Monty Larry was going to go from second to home on that. Two zero. -oh. It's fouled off. Two balls and a strike. Breaking ball to get back in the count 2 2. Jumps last time out was March 9th against Xavier. Went five innings, gave up three hits, did not allow a run, punched out a career high 10 through 87 pitches his last time out. And he got him with a breaking ball. 2 2. Breaking ball gets often for LSU. They've scored runs both in the first, second, and third innings so far today. Jones, Travinsky, and Pearson for LSU here in the fourth. Jared, a two run home run in the first, walked and scored in the third. He's ahead of the count of two balls, no strikes. Home run for Jones, his seventh of the year. Now with 19 runs batted in, he'll hammer this one out toward left field, but right to Aaron Downs. And there's begins tomorrow at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Hayden Travinsky, the DH, one for two with a home run and a ground ball to third. Breaking ball is in for a strike. Three in the first, two in the second, four in the third for LSU. Ball has some run underneath the hands. Yeah, that's a good changeup by Legan. Boy, you can tell it's got some good sink down and away from left handers, of course, down and in to right handers. Throws it hard, too. 88, 89 mile an hour changeup. Fastball's been up to 95. Two, two. Went back to that off speed pitch, and why not? Ligon trying to. 
kind of calm things down for Mississippi State. Time is called. Like something had fallen on the uh, warning tracks that Dakota Jordan had to go over and get it. 2-2. Two -two. Looks like he may have gone around, tried to hold up, and he did, I guess. Surprised they didn't check him. Yeah. Full count. Upstairs. Another walk. Well, you be the judge of this at home. Did he go? Here's a side angle look at it. Fastball that ran kind of up and in. Oh, I guess he held it. That is a big man. Yeah, Travinsky, one of the three-headed monsters behind home plate fellas. You know, he's going to catch a little bit, but mostly going to be a DH, occasionally play first base. Of course, you got Brady Neal, another catcher playing right field, and Alex Malizo behind home plate for the Tigers today. Pearson takes a strike. LSU has picked up six walks in this game so far. One ball with strike. Well, Jay Mitchell Johnson, started this coach. was the struggles that they had offensively, and they've, especially last night with men in scoring position, they've picked them up nicely today, especially via the long ball. Well, you mentioned they had some opportunities to climb back in the game yesterday. They just couldn't do it. But I'll tell you what, I give a lot of credit to Nolan Stevens, too, the true freshman that came in relief. And LSU got three runs early on the starter for State, and Nolan Stevens came in. And I tell you what, he just slammed the door. Five and two-thirds, only allowed that one hit, one run, and punched out eight along the way. And LSU had no answers for him at all. Ground ball, weakly hit towards second. They'll go... Second base for the four shot. They'll take the uh, lead runner, Travinsky, out for the second out of the inning. Pearson reaches on the fielder's choice. Braswell's 0 for 2. Strike out in the line out. Short lead over at first for Pearson. There's two balls and no strikes. Mississippi State team that has pitched better this year. But, uh, clearly today, just a little bit of a shell shock from the early part. They just have not been able to settle in. LSU has, has not allowed them to settle in on the mound. Yeah, I mean, Jay Johnson's approach is like a lot of college coaches, is right? We're going to take some pitches. We're going to look for pitches, that, you know, on balls that we can handle in the zone. We're not scared to take a walk or get hit by a pitch. And LSU, if you look last year and again this year, they're towards the top and hit batters as well. So they just try to find a way to get on bases like a lot of offenses do. That is a walk, the seventh issued by the Bulldog staff. Steven Milam will bat with a couple of men on. And two outs. Milam with a line out in the second, and he walked and scored in the third. Takes a strike. Yeah, if you watch Milam, he's going to put his left foot or his back foot, he's going to put it on the white, on the chalk. You know, he's going to crowd the plate. That's what he does. The hands are quick enough to handle the ball on the inside part of the play, but it also gives him some plate coverage on the balls. See where his left foot is? He's standing on the white right there. You talk about young players, and obviously a true freshman. That's what Steven Milam is. is you go back to that last plate appearance in the third inning on a 3-2 breaking ball down and in. I mean, you spat on it. 
That, mm -hmm. That's how comfortable he looks at the plate as far as pitch recognition. This one's pulled up the line. Nice play. Knocked down by the. Welcome in Jay Johnson, the head coach of the LSU Tigers. Uh, coach, we appreciate the time. I'm sure you're uh, really, I mean, you, you got to like what you've seen so far from the offense from your boys today, especially via the long ball. Yeah, tough game last night, uh, responded well, got a few things cleaned up we wanted to do, and uh, good effort so far. Coach, how about Gage jump? I mean, a little bit of a, you know, he hadn't walked a whole lot of guys coming in. The control hadn't been great. I know he sat there a long time. He had sat for 26 minutes when y'all put a lot of runs on the board. It looked like it took him a little time to get going. But all in all, it's been solid. Yeah, I think he's one of the best pitchers in the country, but he's still relatively new to college baseball. He only threw 14 innings his freshman year before he got hurt. Missed all of last year. And for the, a lot of guys on our team, there's a lot of firsts, like playing in a crowd like this, SEC weekend. So he's got enough good stuff to get us through it. So hopefully we see more of that. Coach, we appreciate the time as always. All right, guys, thank you. LSU on top nine to one here, the bottom of the fourth inning. Gage has issued some walks here, three to be exact, two strikeouts. It's allowed just one hit, and that was in the second inning. And by the way, if you uh, are scoring at home, Milo did get credited with a single, with a base hit, and that uh, top of the fourth inning, where Pearson got thrown out at the plate to end that fourth. You know, Jay Johnson makes a, a good point. You know, he lost so many guys last year. There's a lot of guys that are playing that didn't get many at-bats. Only Tommy White is the only returning everyday player for LSU. Now, it's a very talented bunch that I think in the second half of the season is going to end up being, you know, better when, once they get that experience that we talk about. But it's a pretty young team for them right now when it comes to experience. Breaking ball hits Connor Heisack. So hit batter puts a man on to lead off this bottom of the fourth for Mississippi State. And the way this schedule, this SEC schedule is set up for LSU, they're going to face, you know, and look, anybody in the SEC can beat you. We know that. But if you look at LSU's schedule at Mississippi State, obviously, this weekend, then you get Florida, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, and Tennessee four in a row. And that is a gauntlet to go through. Especially the way that these, these offenses continue to swing the bat. I mean, uh, whether it's non-conference games or even as we saw yesterday, and especially in the SEC, the number of runs that were scored uh, in the first day of action of SEC yeah. baseball weekend. Well, we're arguably in the biggest explosion of offense in college baseball history. Like, we're scoring more runs and we're hitting more home runs than we ever have. Over to third base, nice play, and they get the force out at second base. What a play by Tommy White going to his left and off balance from his knee throwing to second to force out Heisek at second base. It has been a glove show for Tommy White. It started last night, two outstanding plays over at third base. One really good one early in the game. And how about this one? Ball takes him to the glove side towards shortstop, just kind of chews him up. But somehow he keeps his balance and just makes a one hopper over to second base when Milan to collect that lead out. Tommy White playing a little defense today now, known for his offense, but the defense has been working the last couple days. Well, the call at second base is out. And it was Jay Johnson who came out to have a conversation with the umpires. That's an out. I'm trying to figure out why Coach Johnson would be out there. Was it something State with the slide, the maybe? Second base. Biggest praise number for you. So Mississippi State is challenging to play at second base, which makes sense. I, I, get, I would imagine that maybe Coach Johnson thought that a little interference. I mean, you're not going to turn double play on that. There no. didn't seem to be any contact either on the part of Isaac into Milo. I thought the slide was clean to me. Like he, yeah. he looked like he slid directly into second base, which is what you're allowed to do. Yeah, so I'm, I thought the I'm exact not same sure thing. What, what Jay was was talking about here, the slide looks good to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe that he slid through the base. I mean, I guess that's subject to interpretation, but didn't interfere with Milam. And Milam's not in a position. He's, he's not even thinking about turning two. Yeah, that looks said, The call on the field is out.
Crew chief is Scott Klein. He's over at first base today. I mean, there would have to be a definitive angle where Milam's foot appears to be off the base. It's like my eyesight in the morning when I get up. <laughs> no chance. Before you put your glasses on, huh? <laughs> That's exactly right. After review, the call of out to second base stands. So one down. Mississippi State has one challenge remaining for the game. You know, and Milam's foot may have come off, but I don't know if there was enough evidence to really overturn it. And that's maybe when the call stands on the field. Yeah, you'd almost have to have a like a left field camera shooting back toward the infield, see if there was separation there. But what a play by Tommy White. Second defensive gem that he has had today. Logan Kohler 0 for 1. Fly ball to center. Behind in the count here. No balls, two strikes. Kohler last night, two for four with an RBI and a walk. We'll shoot this one out toward left center field, giving Chase on his bingham, and it'll fall in for base hit. Rounding second, now heading to third base, is Downs. And it'll go as a double for Mississippi State. Kohler second of the year. Well, that was a nice piece of hitting by Kohler, too. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. He didn't try to pull it, didn't try to hook it. He just simply let the hands go first and barreled it out the opposite way toward left center field. This is a really good swing on a breaking ball. And look, that, that ball's borderline even being a strike. Easily going first to third here, no doubt about that. It was going to be a stand-up double all the way, even with Bingham bobbling the ball, I think, out toward center field. You know, it almost appeared as if Downs thought about there's a hesitation as he rounded second base. This one's shot down the line, foul. No balls and a strike on Bryce Chance. Second and third, one out. Chance of DH, skied one to right in his first at bat. He's 0 for 1. This one's down the left field, line hit well toward the corner, and that is gone. A three run home run for Bryce Chance, second of the year. It is 9 to 4 LSU. Well, that's how you climb back in the ball game right there, folks. Hanging breaking ball. Rice Chance out of that eight hole, a Weaver, a three run shot. Mississippi State starting to climb right back in this thing. So last night, Luke Holman not allowed an earned run. Going into his start, same could be said for Gage Jump coming into this start. He's given up four. There, Joe Powell, the catcher. He'll swing first pitch, and that's lined in the left center field, a base hit. All of a sudden here, here come the dogs, huh? Boy, they had a good night last night, too. They had some big base hits, a lot of two-out base hits. Matter of fact, half their runs they scored last night were in two-out situations. They were really good runners in scoring position. You mentioned it early, 7 for 14. LSU 0 for 9 last night, runners in scoring position. Yeah. LSU with some action in their bullpen. That breaking ball, did it get them? And it did. Down and in, got the foot of Amani Larry. Things unraveling quickly in this fourth inning for Gage Jump. Looks 
like the right-hander Will Helmer is getting heated up for LSU. He is quickly getting heated up. It's a second hit batter for jump in this inning. David Mershon, switch inning shortstop up, 0 for 2. It's way outside. What are you seeing between uh, this inning and the first couple of innings for Gage Jump, Ed? Well, one thing I'm seeing is the ball's up a little bit more than it was the first couple of innings. Like, the, the ball is up in the zone a good bit more. And the breaking ball command that he had has not been that good. He's kind of overcooking it to, you know, down and end of the day. He's hit a couple of batters with the breaking ball. But if you listen to Jay Johnson, he'll tell you. I mean, I mean this is a kid that is still, while the stuff is really good and all the scouts love him, he doesn't have that many innings in college ball at all. You got to remember, he's already exceeded this year what he threw his first two years at LSU, and it's not many innings at all. I mean, we're talking about a kid that's close to about 30, 35 innings in his entire career. Marshawn shoots one foul. Two balls, two strikes. Sixty-five pitches thrown by Jump so far. That's a called strike three. Got him looking. Two down. Well, that's a Just big a time third strikeout. Right big time. You can see Alex Belizo. Alex Belizo sets up on the outside corner. He said, "Left-hander, give it to me right here on the outside part of the plate." You talk about well done by Gage Jump. You can't do it any better than that. That's. He's got two on with two outs facing Dakota Jordan. Pickoff attempted second base. And that ball gets into center field. Powell will go to third. He's going to be stopped there as the throw comes into second. Looks like Powell slamming on the brakes may have hurt himself. Yeah, pickoff moving. And, and Milam is, is nowhere near second base. So I'm not sure what that, what that is. Well, you hate to see that. He's holding his right knee, it looks like. Apparently, he's okay. Sinker misses down and in. Well, I tell you what, we are just one big swing away from having ourselves a ball game here. Mississippi State's got the guy at the plate that they want right now. A dribbler foul. Ball and a strike on Jordan, who walked in the first, grounded out in the third. Go to Jordan, nine long balls on the year. Had ten last year total. Nine already this year. He's homered in five of his last seven games. Two balls, one strike. Powell over at third. Larry with good speed at second base. I mean, careful here because Dakota Jordan has not been missing much. This is bouncing over to Tommy White, gets rid of it quickly, and the third out is recorded. But Mississippi State strikes for three on the home run by Bryce Chance. Four complete, 9 4 LSU. On the map and got him going. Nine, one, and two for LSU. First one's outside. Malazzo, Bingham, and White. Many great players come through Mississippi State. Jonathan Papelbon. Jake Mangum. You mentioned those guys from the uh, from the 80s. That's that's kind of when I was right in my wheelhouse watching college baseball. Yeah, how could you forget Thunder and Lightning, right? Was it any no was it a better duo in college baseball than Thunder and Lightning? How about 19 first round draft picks? It is a proud program. That was at a time, if memory serves me correctly, Mississippi State, Oklahoma State with Robin Ventura and then Pete Incavilia. Arizona yep. State was solid. Miami was unbelievable. And I always remember, for whatever reason, the main Black Bears always seemed to play deep into uh, the postseason for whatever reason. Lead off walk to Malazzo. Puts a man on to start this fifth.
Yeah, I mean, that, that was coming out of high school, that was one of the visits I took. I mean, it was LSU, Texas, or Mississippi State. And I loved Ron Polk, and he's still a huge friend of mine, you know, and I hear from him all the time and love chatting with him. And, of course, he was one of the coaches on the Olympic team. But I thought hard about going to Mississippi State because at the time they were the program. There was some guy by the name of Berkman that took over for LSU about my junior year in high school. And he goes to the College World Series, my senior year. I said, okay, this guy might be okay. He might, he might do okay. I think I'm going to go to LSU, you know. And so <laughs> he had, nobody knew what was going to happen with Skip Berman at the time. But Ron Polk ran a first-class program for sure. Mac Bingham, a home run back in the second. He's one for two. He's also picked up a walk. Well, I love that changeup. I like it right there. He can really spin that break for that changeup he is. And he starts at kind of the center part of the plate, both the right-handers and the left-handers, but he's got enough dive and darts to the right enough where he gets some swings over the top of it by the right-handed hitters. One, two, misses in. Two balls, two strikes. The evolution of the changeup over the years, huh? I mean, in our mm -hmm. time, and you going back 20 years ago, a changeup was a pitch that was made to be hit, but now a lot of guys are throwing swing and miss type changeups. I'm surprised it's not thrown more often. You know, you hear guys, if, well, if you're righty, don't throw a changeup to a righty. If you're lefty, don't throw a changeup to a lefty. If you've got a good changeup, then throw it, especially yep. if you and get if you some outs out of it. Especially when you have the movement like that. I mean, our changeups, mm -hmm. we didn't pronate like they do now with the circle change. We threw almost a straight changeup, which, you know, killed the speed of it, but it didn't have the action to it. And that's why it's turned into a swing and miss pitch now because you get the arm action like a fastball, so it looks like a fastball, but then it's a lot slower and it's got a lot of movement to it now. That's the one everybody's throwing now. Three balls, two strikes. Foul to the plate. Tommy White on deck. Nine to four LSU. Mississippi State picking up the opening game of the series last night. Ten runs on 16 hits. Chopper foul. Kind of a defensive swing, which you, you kind of take, right? You got to, I mean, you, you still have to be cognizant of the fastball, but that off speed pitch, you kind of pull the shoot a little bit later just to keep the at bat alive. Yeah, I mean, Ligon's shown he'll throw just about any pitch in any situation. Down goes Bingham, round number one. That might have been the changeup again. We'll take a look at it. 3 2, he threw a 3 2 breaking ball, a 3 2 changeup, and then. Yeah, right back to the, another really good changeup, 86 miles an hour. You see the late movement on that? Like, it stayed in the heart of the plate a long time, almost all the way there. Then the last couple feet, it just kind of bottoms out and runs down and in. Multi-hit game so far for Tommy White, two for three. Solo home run in the first inning, two RBI single in the third. Well, Tommy White's in a position now. I mean, he was so protected last year. He had Dylan Cruz hitting around him. He had Joe Bear hitting around him. He had a lot of guys hitting around him to put up some big-time numbers. So he had to be pitched to. This year, it's been a little bit different for him. You know, he's seeing a lot of those pitches right there. He's not getting many fastballs. You know, he's getting a lot of 2-0 change-ups, 2-0 breaking balls. You know, anytime he's ahead in the count or behind the count, it seems like they're fishing a lot of off-speed stuff. So he had some, he's had to make some adjustments this year and kind of sit back and try to hit the ball the other way. That's another really good changeup, and that's kind of how they pitched him this year. And I think early in the year watching him, he was kind of rolling over a lot of stuff, still thinking he's going to get a lot of fastballs, but he just hadn't gotten any of them. Okay, he went around. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, two down here the fifth. Carson Ligon has got that changeup dancing like a minna in shallow water right now. How about that? That was right on the outside part of the plate. And watch this one dance, too. I mean, just bottoms out. That's two outstanding changeups in a row.
Milazzo still over at first base. Brady Neal and looks at a strike. And that's the thing about Ligon. I mean, you can't go up there and sit on his changeup because it's 86, 87 miles an hour because he's got enough arm with his fastball, right? Fastball's been up to 95. You sit changeup, he can get the heater right by you. This one lifted out toward left field. Slicing toward the foul line, but didn't stay in play. Nice little route there. 13 long ones, and of course, Tim Corbin picked up his 1,000th win the other day. It, 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 the offense, like you were talking about, Condon and Drew Burris, what he's doing as a freshman at Georgia Tech, Daniel Cuvay for the University of Miami. It just, these guys aren't skipping a beat. They're rolling into no, some pretty I mean, decent look, conferences and not skipping a beat. The ball is flying. It started flying about three years ago, you know, and it's where we are now. And the exit velos are getting scary again, and there's a lot of offense in the game. Well, going deep to his right is Jones, and that was probably ill-advised. They were not going to get to play at first base. Yeah, a nice job by Alex Belizer, the catcher for LSU, to be backing that one up just in case. And boy, did it ever get away. Jerry Jones does all he can do. Goes to the backhand side. Watch him move. He's kind of playing the lines. He has to go a long way. Backhands the ball. Pitcher covering in Helmers, but the throw is up the line. And there's Alex Malazzo just to pinch it off to keep the runner at first base. Yeah, you know, I went back and looked, and, and the average SEC team last year in conference play only had a 6.2 ERA. That was the average ERA in conference play last year, and it looks like we're heading that direction again. It's crazy. Jones got charged with an error on that play. Man on. That's a tough Albert error. Right a strike. That play. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Connor Heisek, the center fielder, walked. His first plate appearance was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Get off me swing. That ball rolled down the line. It's foul. That's kind of what Will Helmers likes to do. Again, the fastball is not a high velocity fastball, but he, he's changed his arm slide a little bit. He's kind of dropped down to a, a three quarter, low three quarter, throwing a lot of two seamers now, trying to get that horizontal movement. That was a really good fastball right in on the hands of Isaac. Two balls, two strikes. Bryce Chance with a three run home run in the fourth inning to get Mississippi State back in this game. This one skied out toward right center field. And back on it is Bingham and out of the track, he'll haul it in. One down. Hines back to first. Yeah, it's, it's really been kind of the bottom part of this lineup for Mississippi State today so far. You know, Downs, one for two. Kohler, one for two with the double. Of course, you mentioned Bryce Chance, three run homer by him. And even Joe Powell down in the nine hole is one for two as well. That one just missed down and in. The ball is no strikes. Downs, who singled. In the second, reach out a fielder's choice and score to the fourth. One for two so far. Way upstairs. Kind of a modified shift. Mile on the second baseman playing toward the middle. Still on the second base side of the bag. Big hole on the right side. 3 0. LSU with action in their bullpen. There's ball four. The two on with one out. Yeah, that's exactly how Mississippi State's going to get back in this ballgame. They need base runners. It's like Griffin Herring, the left-hander, getting heated up in that LSU bullpen. 
First pitch to Cole or a breaking ball for a strike. There's that good slider of his, and that's what he's in there to do. Lefty on lefty matchup. And that's what Jay Johnson can do with all those left handers. When he gets himself in the situation, he can go down there and grab one of those many left handers he has and bring him into the ball game. This one's fouled off. No balls, two strikes. Cole of the third baseman's one for two, doubled and scored his last at bat. He's got Hines at second and Downs at first with one out. Herring taking over for Halbers, who lasted two thirds of an inning. Two base runners are his responsibility. This one shot out towards center field. Bingham coming on. He'll go into a dive and can't come up with it. It gets by him. One run is in. Heading to third base. And in there safely is Downs. Kohler ends up at second. Boy, nice job by Kohler again. Boy, he's having himself a day, too. Two for three now, a couple doubles and an RBI. 0-2 count slider away, just kind of hits it right off the end of the bat. Bingham comes in hard and lays out, but he is well short of it. The ball kicks by him. You see Josh Pierce in the left fielder gets to it and drives and gets the ball in, but Mississippi State pushes across yet another run. It's a 9-5 ball game now. Runners on second and third and just one out. Bryce Chance, the batter, three-run home run his last time up. He lifts this one out toward right center field. Bingham is there. Tagging at third is Downs. He's coming home to score. Sack fly, and it's a three-run deficit for Mississippi State. 9-6 LSU. A four-RBI game for Bryce Chance so far. Yeah, the bottom part of this lineup for Mississippi State is getting it done today. Here's the number nine hitter, Joe Powell. Powell one for two with a single. Breaking ball just misses. Remember when it was nine to one? Not so yeah. much anymore. Ain't no quit in this team. Never has been. The crowd came to life on the uh, three-run home run by Chance in the fourth inning. Outside, breaking ball, it's 3-0. And Monty Larry, the leadoff man, second baseman's on deck. Pretty good take, but two by Powell. I mean, I know you're feeling good about a 3-0, looking in one zone. Pitcher's pitch. 3-1. That's a little bit down. Ball four. Brings up the tying run. Yeah, how about that? All of a sudden, the tying run steps the plate for Mississippi State after they were just down 9-1 to one a couple of innings ago. Larry with the ground down, a walk and a hit by pitch his last time up. First and third with two outs. Yeah. He's off that breaking ball. Well, Monty Larry's just one of those guys you pull for. You know, nobody really gave him a chance out of high school in Louisiana. I had to go play junior college ball, and he excelled at the junior college level and finally got an opportunity to play big time college baseball, and he yeah. has not disappointed. Yep. Great story. Junior College to New Orleans to Mississippi State. Play to it. It does. It's a lovely stash. There's no doubt about it. Cold strike, two and one.
more than likely Herring's last batter. Switch hitter David Mershon on deck. Kohler at third, Powell at second. Here comes the 3-1. Chopper foul. Full count. Powell gave the head start from first. LSU with five walks in a day. And that's the thing, LSU leads the nation in strikeouts, but the walks can be an issue from time to time as well. And they have been so far today. A couple of hit by pitches, five walks. This one's pulled down the line. Foul. So Powell will head back to first base and reset. LSU came in with 241 strikeouts on the year. That's number one in Division I baseball. Mississippi State in the top ten. They came in with 219 strikeouts as a team. Another payoff on the way. And there's ball four, and they're loaded up. So Kohler at third, Powell at second, Larry at first base. First shot of the batter. Fly ball to center, ground down to strikeout. 0 for 3. Bends that one in on the outside part of the play for strike. Outfield straight around for LSU. Big hole on the right side of the infield. No balls, two strikes. Griffin Herring, really good breaking ball for strike one. Looked like a little two seam fastball kind of down and away for strike two. Going back outside and misses. And a one two count. You're on the bump. What are you throwing right here? I, I think if he can bury a breaking ball, but I wouldn't throw it for a strike. Like, start it in the zone, have it start as a strike, and have it work out of the zone. Moving back to the two-seamer. Mm -hmm. Now you're in a situation where you don't want to go 3-2 with the bases loaded. So you almost have to throw a strike here. Full count. Almost looked like on that one two fastball, he tried to make the perfect pitch to the arm side. Get the merry go round going here. Three two, two outs, bases loaded. Runners off of the pitch at three two, and that's lifted in the air, shallow right. Playable for Brady Neal. Third out is recorded. Nine to six, LSU, top of the sixth inning. Jones, Travinsky, and Pearson. Ligon still on the bump for Mississippi State. He's kind of calmed things down. LSU with three in the first, two in the second, four in the third. But Ligon, since he's come in, has really, really stymied the LSU offense. Two balls and strikes on Jared Jones. Yeah, it was Nolan One Stevens in relief. Yesterday, remember him in relief. Boy, what a, what an outing he had. He just shut down his LSU offense. Well, all of a sudden, Carson Liggins kind of doing the same thing. Off speed pitch. Nowhere near the strike zone. Three balls, one strike. Home run that Jones hit his seventh of the year. That was in the first inning. He fouls this one back. Big rip on a high fastball. That is pulled to the left side and a base hit. 
Even with a shift on, Jones hits right through it. Leadoff man on board for LSU. Yeah, when Jared Jones puts a barrel on it, though, I don't care how many people's on the left side of the field, it just rockets that way, and that one was barreled up. Hayden Travinsky, a one for two game so far with a home run and a walk. Is that off speed pitch again? LSU has seen a lot of those off speed pitches, the change up from Ligon. Ligon issued a leadoff walk to start the fifth inning to turn the lineup around at the top, but then. Big strikeouts of Bingham and White, then got Neal to Skywell to left field. Head off speed again. That's one of that two. Is, that's a nasty pitch right there. Because again, you can't sit on it, because if you sit on it, he gets 94 right by you. But it's got that late movement to that changeup. And the key is throwing it just like your fastball. The arm speed is really good. It looks exactly like the fastball out of the hands. Like he wants to change up again. Check swing. Did not go. Mississippi State apparently not using the watch like a lot of teams using because you can see the catcher, Joe Powell, he's putting down fingers behind home plate. Nice. Three two all the way. Swing. And a miss. One down. Well, that's a perfect example right there of kind of sitting on the all-speed pitch, and when you do, he can get 94 right by you. So a steady diet of change-ups, and I always thought slow, slow, fast is one of the best sequences in baseball. Doesn't matter if it's a change-up or a change-up in a breaking ball, but you go slow, slow, fast, and it just seems like that fastball plays up even more. There's really no chance for Trevinsky there. 94 just chews him up. Hitters meeting. Josh Pearson due up. I would imagine that Coach Johnson has given the speech that you just basically uh, regurgitated yourself about the off-speed. It's tough to sit on that off-speed pitch. Yeah, I think if you get counts in your favor, right, and it's not a two-strike count, maybe you can sit on certain pitches in certain situations. But with two strikes, all bets are off. you got to hit off the fastball. Two and a third so far for Ligon. Pearson a one for three game, single back in the first. One ball, no strikes. Both teams have thrown a lot of pitches in this game. Mm -hmm. See, this is a situation here. One oh, I don't mind sitting on the change up here. I mean, if you get the change up, have a good swing at it. If he throws you a fastball, it's one one. And he's fallen into the pattern of where he is. He feels comfortable with the change up. He's getting the whether it's a strike call or the swings on it, so you might as well stick with that. There's a fastball for a strike. Maybe caught the bottom part of the strike zone. Two balls and a strike. Well, it's been just what the scout report said. I mean, the best pitch starred asterisk was the changeup, and it has been by far. Back to the fastball, two and two. Pearson bats with the shift on him with three infielders on the right side. Nine to six LSU. We're at the top of the sixth inning. Off speed and that has ripped the first base. It's going to turn into a double play. Right two for the Bulldogs as they bat here at the bottom of the sixth inning and their big man is at the play. Three, four, five, Jordan, Hines, and Heisek. Do up for the Bulldogs. Dakota Jordan 0 for 2. The walk and two ground outs to third. Yeah, so Tommy White expected to be a first runner, rounder. And of course, Dakota Jordan is a draftable sophomore. They got him penciling as a potential first rounder as well. 
very toolsy. Still a little bit raw. There's some swing and miss there, but he's got a little bit of everything. Good throwing arm from the outfield. He can run a little bit. Of course, the power speaks for itself. Nine homers already this year. One, two, and he goes down, swinging at that breaking ball down and in. One down. Well, this is where all pitchers are trying to get to with two strikes. Something that starts in the zone, it looks like a strike out of the hand. It stays in the zone a long time, and boy, at the last minute, this thing dives down and in and just underneath the bat of Dakota Jordan. Unlike the last half inning for, for Herring, that pitch right there, he threw that with conviction. Well, it's amazing when you get ahead, right? When, when you're always right. pitching from behind, it seems like you can't throw balls with conviction. You know, you're worried about giving the ball, barreling the ball up, ball going over the fence in today's game. But when you work ahead, and that's why pitchers, pitching is not defense. Pitching is offense. Pitching is about attacking the hitters at the plate and putting them on defense right away. That's what pitching is. This one over to first base. Jones has it, two down. It's amazing when you work ahead and you put hitters on defense right away, you're going to have success pretty much at every level you play. But when you're constantly in 2-0, 3-1, 3-2 counts, hitters counts, you're making it very difficult on yourself. And I think it's just about young pitchers trusting their stuff and trusting their stuff over the white part of the plate and challenging. Connor Heisek at the plate, the center fielder, takes down and away. Because I mean, you look at Griffin Herring, he's got good stuff. I mean, it's from the left side, fastball's up to 95. We see how good the breaking ball is as well. Isaac skies this one. Third base side. It's out of play. One ball, one strike. I don't know what it is about Herring, but he kind of reminds me of Former Rangers left-handed starter, Derek Holland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that comparison. The hair, the way he delivers the baseball. I don't know if he could do it a Harry Carey impersonation like Holland can, but might as well start working on it. Two odd. That is foul back. Two balls, two strikes. LSU trying to retire Mississippi State in order for the first time today. Two-two. A swing and a miss and for the first. First one on the way is in there for a strike. All of a sudden, that bottom part of the strike zone is starting to show up. Yeah, I felt Braswell like it wasn't two. there. Wasn't there early in the ball game, but it seems to no. be there now. This one's out toward center field, and the base hit to lead off this seventh inning. Braswell with his first knock, one for three. Hey, our SEC Network Baseball Game of the Week. Next week is the series finale between number eight Florida, number two LSU, and Baton Rouge. Coverage begins Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern, 2 Central. Another Final really behind the count of 1. Another good arm out of this state bullpen, too. Tyson Harden, fastball up to 94. Four pitch mix for him. Throw that fastball, cutter, slider, and a changeup. Bylum's had a one for two games, lined out, walked, and singled. Also scored a run. One and two. Defense for Mississippi State pretty much straight up, and Milov goes down swinging. Challenge him at 95, one away. Yeah, that's just good old-fashioned 
Just good old-fashioned country hardball right there. My best against yours. One ball, two strike count. And I tell you what, Harden just rares back, throws a four-seamer right by Stephen Milam at 95 miles an hour. One out, one on. Number nine hitter, Alex Malazzo up. He's been on board yeah, all three to, times with a single and two walks. Same. Talk about production down at the bottom, huh? One for one, couple of walks. Two down, Hines. Single. Homer back in the second inning. One of four hit by LSU so far. Bingham for the young man, his third of the season. 1 0. 1 0. Well, this is when you sit on a fastball and you get your foot down and you go. You gear up for 95. She just has not been able to get anything going since that third inning. Well, I tell you what, if you're strike. Tyson Harden, yeah, this is the guy you want. With Tommy White sitting on deck, this is the guy you want to get with two strikes, with two outs, rather. And a walk. Two out variety puts two on for Tommy. Spreads those legs out a little bit, and there's not much movement at all, but still has the power, even in a spread out position, hit the ball over the ballpark or drive it to the opposite field. First one on the way, nowhere near the strike zone. That one lacked a little conviction. One ball, no strike. That's probably the conversation is hey, don't you give in to Tommy White in this situation. If you walk him, you walk him. We'll deal with it because we got two out. We'll face Brady Neal. But don't groove one to Tommy White here. It's kind of what it looks like. Look like they're going to just kind of fish around him a little bit. Maybe he'll swing at something out of the zone. And these are situations we talked about with Tommy White. You know, is hey, understand the situation, understand when they're going to pitch to you when they're not. And clearly they're not going to pitch to him as they're going to put him on now. Yeah, I figured, uh, I, I was wondering why they weren't just going to walk him at that point after not wanting to throw anything near the strike zone. That, that's got to be the worst coming from a pitching coach. Hey, don't give them anything good to hit. Right. Like you're ever trying to give somebody that's at the plate <laughs> something good to hit. But I think the longer you get in your career, you start to understand situations. Because you know this. I mean, anytime you do a scouting report before the game or before the series, you always circle one guy on the other team. You're going to say, this guy's not going to beat me. He is not mm -hmm. going to beat me. And that was that situation. Tommy White's a guy where every team circles and says, Tommy White's not going to beat us today. Brady Neal, 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. He's got the bases loaded. 0-1 upstairs. Ball and a strike. Braswell at third base, Bingham at second, White at first. 9-6 to six LSU here in the seventh. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, Brady Neal's got himself in a pretty good place. He's always been a pretty good fastball hitter. No reason to be late on a fastball here. Oh, center cut takes it for a strike. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what Neil was thinking there. I mean, that's that's kind of overthinking it right there. Two, two, two outs. The pitch called strike three. Took two fastballs after getting ahead of two. Herring's back on the bump. Downs, Kohler, and Chance do up for the Bulldogs. 
Herring settled down nicely in that sixth inning at a one two three frame including a couple of strikeouts. Aaron Downs one for two with a single and a walk. It's also scored a run. It's this one's fouled off. No balls, two strikes. Here's the one two almost got him to chase it. Counting it up at two balls two strikes. Certainly has not been a uh, a pitcher friendly game a lot of walks in this game combined. That is a called strike three got him looking painted a fastball on the inside part of the plate one down. Well, that's just dot in the eye big time right there. Away, away, a couple of breaking balls and fastballs away, and all of a sudden the LSU catcher, Alex Meliza, watch him rock to the inside part of the plate. He says, lefty, give it to me right there. And, boy, you talk about well done by Griffin Herring. That's what I always like to watch. I like to watch the catcher where he sets up and see how close the pitcher comes to hitting the glove. Breaking ball. On the ground at second base. What a play by Milam to the backhand. Robs Cole or two down. Oh, flash some leather, youngster, huh? Steven Milam, the true freshman out of New Mexico. He was a Gatorade High School Player of the Year last year in New Mexico. And how about this play? He's playing deep where he should be in just a one hopper. Almost eats him up, but slides right to the backhand side. Collects himself and a dart over to first base. Two outs, nobody off for Bryce Chance, the DH. Chance a three-run home run in the fourth inning, second home run of the season. He had a sack fly in the fifth, so a four-RBI game for him, giving him 14 on the season. So it's back toward the middle, and Milam can't come up with this one. So Chance again coming through. A two-out base hit keeps the inning alive. Have a day, Bryce Chance, huh? Chance came in hitting 232 at one homer, and I tell you what, he has barreled some balls a day right back from whence it came. Milam was shaded in the right direction, but the ball hit too hard. It's by him out to center field, so a two out knock by Bryce Chance. Brings up the catcher, Joe Powell. One for two with a single and a walk. Johnson's going to come out. Yeah, Jay Johnson told us the other day, he's kind of been one of the back end guys, one of the better relievers for LSU out of that bullpen. Harry did a nice job at his performance today. Two and a third with three strikeouts and a couple of walks for the sophomore. Yeah, he got it going late. You know, retired seven in a row before he gave up that two out base hit to Bryce Chance. Uyoa, two seasons at San Joaquin Delta College in Stockton, California. Big right-hander coming in to kind of just uh, tamp down things just in case. A three-run lead. Jay Johnson not, not messing around here. Yeah, if you're Jay Johnson at LSU, you got to have this one. you got to have the middle game after Mississippi State beat you 10-4 in last night's game. Looks like Nolan Stevens is going to pinch hit for Joe Powell. Three sixty four on the season. Eleven at bats has a home run one RBI. Did it with his left arm last night on the bump for five and two thirds picking up the win. Time is called. He 
yet. For me, he was the MVP. I know that state offense was really good last night, but boy, when Stevens came in the game, LSU was, was putting up some runs on the scoreboard. He just drew a line in the sand big time and shut them down. Chance over at first base. Here's the 1-0. Ground ball toward the middle. It's a base hit. Chance on the move will head to third base easily. And Mississippi State had runners at the corners with two outs here in the seventh. Coach Lamon is pushing all the right buttons. Goes to his bench. Brings in Stevens, who was last night's hero. He keeps it moving. First and third now with two outs. Tie and run at the plate. Monty Larry, the second baseman, coming to the plate now. Been on board three times via the walk. Hit by pitch. 0 for 1. Time is called. Johnson's going to go back out. Coach Lamonis is out as well. He's bringing kind of the midweek starter for LSU. Four appearances. All four have been starts. His first relief appearance of the year. Really good fastball. Commands it well. You see from the left side, true freshman up to 94 right there. And a banger breaking ball to go right behind it as well. He's had an outstanding freshman campaign so far. 16 and two-thirds. 27 punch outs for the freshman. Upstairs and it's in and out of the glove of Belazzo, runners cannot advance. One ball, one strike. Kate Anderson actually started one of the midweek games for LSU this past week, but they took him out early. He only threw 30-something pitches just in case they needed him on the weekend, and apparently they need him in a big way. Two balls, one strike. Chance the base runner at third base. Stevens, the pinch hitter, is the uh, base runner at first. In tight. Three and one. Mershon on deck. Here's a three one pitch. And is lined out to center field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. One run is in. Rounding second and headed to third is Stevens. As the throw comes back toward the middle of the infield. It is a two-run deficit for Mississippi State. 9-7 LSU. Well, Monty Larry got himself in a fastball count. 3-1 count. And he said, I'm going to sit on a fastball. And he got one, too. Watch him get his foot down early. Fastball enter third. He quickly just turns it around. Mississippi State pushes across another one with a first and third situation now. Two out. Larry picks up his 12th RBI. And here's Mershon. I'll foul this one off. Go balls and a strike. Last at bat for Mershon. He was up with the bases loaded, hitting a fly ball to right field. He's 0 for 4 so far in the afternoon. Off speed pitch. That's foul to play. No balls, two strikes. That was a changeup by Anderson. So it's a three pitch mix for him. Good fastball. Change up and a Solid breaking ball that we have not seen as of yet. Do you start Larry Malizo. from first base? Well, that's what Alex Malazzo is. He's out in front giving signals on whether they're going to throw down if, if Larry takes off here. There's some ground down the first, first base line and into the quarter. One run is in. Larry will go to third. He's going to try to score. The throw to the plate is in time. 
hot smash down the line that Jared Jones could not hang on to. As we've got a new catcher behind the plates, Johnny Long. Got the start last night, is back there. After Nolan Stevens pinch hit for Joe Powell. Jones, Travinsky, and Pearson for LSU here in their half of the eighth inning. Little chopper to the left side. Mershon has it. One down. Hayden Travinsky, the DH, one for three with a home run back into third. Foul back into long. No balls at a strike. Second inning of relief for right-hander Tyson Harden. Got a big strikeout of Brady Neal with the bases loaded and two outs in the seventh. One ball, one strike. LSU with three in the first, two in the second, four in the third. But it held scoreless since then. Travinsky chops this one towards short, backhanded by Mershon, gets up, fires over to first, and the throw gets away. Travinsky will reach. Throw a little bit up the line, and nothing Hines can do at first base. Yeah, Mershon playing about as deep as he could be. To the backhand side. Boy, nice play there. Squares his shoulders and throw just a little bit toward the right field line. Pulls the first baseman Hines off. Travinsky gets credited with a hit. The second of the afternoon, early evening. Man on for Pearson. Gaby LSU scoring for Mississippi State has been. The other way around is that one misses outside. Bulldogs got a run in the second, scored three in the fourth, two in the fifth, and just hung two more up in the seventh. And that's how we got a one run deficit for Mississippi State. Pearson a one for four game, had a single back in the first. Takes the high strike. Yeah, if you turn this ball game off after three, you've missed a good game. Nine to one LSU after three, and it has been all Mississippi State since then. That gets away. That will allow Travinsky to get the second. And with the shift on, you see Kohler hurrying to get over to third base. Wild pitch advancing Travinsky in a scoring position. Called strike. Well, strike zone seems perfect. to be opening up a little bit, right? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit bigger than where it started, no doubt about it. But that's a tough fastball. That's a fastball that starts, you know, kind of off the plate as a ball and just kind of leaks it back as it runs back. That's a swing and a miss. The ball goes up the first base line, and Pearson will reach. That's a strikeout wild pitch. Runners at first and third. And this ball may have hit Pearson, but clearly he offered at it. And if you offer it, it doesn't matter if it hits you or not. It's strike three. What a breaking ball that was. I couldn't tell if it hit Pearson or if it hit the catcher, Johnny Long, but it hit one of them. Boy, Pearson just hustles it out, so a first and third, one out situation for LSU. Well, Coach Lamotas came out. His uh, left forearm to me. It went off of something. I thought it was off the bat, to be perfectly honest with you. And if you're Lamotas, I'm thinking, okay, would you rather have, a, you'd rather have him back at the plate with two strikes? 
That was a little bit low. One ball, one strike. Michael Braswell. Boy, these are these situations in ball games where you got to be really good. When you don't need a base hit to score a run, can you figure out a way to do it? Hershaw to Larry, the relay back to first and dug out of the dirt. A double play to end the inning in the threat. And making it a one run deficit. We start this bottom of the eighth inning. Dakota Jordan steps in against Anderson, who's still on the bump. Three, four, and five for the Bulldogs Jordan, Hines, and Heisek. Dakota 0 for three. He's ahead of the count of two balls and no strikes. Jordan with a that walk, a couple play. of groundouts, and a strikeout. Might end up being the play of the game if it hangs the way it is right now. You know, Stephen Milan, the second baseman, hustled all the way down the right field line, picked that ball up and threw a dart to Alex Malizo, who applied the tag. Of course, that was the tying run that LSU cut down at home plate. Three oh. And there's ball four. Leadoff man is on board. This is the play we're talking about right here. Watch Milam, the second baseman. He takes off in a dead run. Ball gets hung up right around the bullpen for LSU. Watch him quickly get to the ball, and he wastes no time. Throws a dart to Alex Maliza, who actually just lunges and dives at Amani Larry and somehow applies a tag to get LSU off the field. But that would have been the tie and run at the time. One oh. This one's skied out to shallow right field. Milam's going out. Neal comes in. One away. We're tuning in, looking for the Tennessee Alabama game. You can find it on the Tennessee Net channel as well as the ESPN app. So Brady Neal in right. Jake Brown is in right now. Heisek, the center fielder, up with the man on. Let's check in on Dakota. Easily gets back. Well, Jay Johnson asking a lot out of his true freshman pitcher. First relief appearance of the year. That is pulled in the left field, a base hit. Jordan will stop at second. Bulldogs with runners at first and second and one down. Well, Mississippi State has impressed me the last two days. We heard a lot about their offense. It's on the struggle bus a little bit, but. 16 hits last night, which was a season high, and 16 hits are the most LSU have given up all year long. All of a sudden, you turn around today, and they've got 10 hits of double digit hits from back to back games. Jay Johnson back out. Aaron Downs, the batter. Dakota Jordan at second base, Connor Heisek at first. Downs one for three, single and a walk. Cuts through the first pitch. There's that hard slider at 90 miles an hour. Fastball be right around 94 to 96. Hard slider and a pretty good changeup that he'll use most of the time against left handers. Ground ball left side down the line. Backhanded at third. Get the four shot. Throw to first base. Got him. What a play by Stop Tommy White. Third Stop of it. this ball game. 
Tommy White, are you kidding me? All we've heard about they're late to win the national championship. They still fielded 11th best out of 14 teams. Well, they're sitting number six in the SEC right now in fielding percentage. In a game where there's been a ton of offense, it's really been two outstanding defensive plays by LSU to put a difference in this ballgame. Eight, nine, and one for LSU here in the ninth inning. Mila, Milazzo, and Bingham. Tyson Harden still on the bump for Mississippi State. Milo looks at a strike, two and one. One for three games so far with a single and a walk. He's also scored a run. Three balls, one strike. How about these Mississippi State relievers, though, huh? Ligon goes mm -hmm. three and a third, no runs. Tyson Harden's into his third inning now with no runs. They have certainly shut this LSU offense down. And there's a leadoff walk. That's the LSU. 11th walk issued by Mississippi State. Yeah. LSU got the leadoff guy on in the sixth, didn't score. Got the leadoff guy on in the seventh, didn't score. And that leadoff guy in the ninth is on. Could be a bunt situation here. See if LSU's going to try to play for a little insurance run. Takes a strike. Malazzo with a single, a couple of walks, and a pop up. One for two. Cole are creeping in at third base. And the hit and run was on, but it's foul back. Milam will head back to first. It's almost like a little softball play, a little show bunt and slap it the other way, put a runner in motion. Mm -hmm. little, uh, they call it Butcher Boy. <laughs> Old school. Now you see Malazzo, he's choked up on that bat. He's just trying to find something he can put in play. Showing butt. This was up the line. That'll work. Throw goes the first sacrifice. Advances Milam to second. That's big time there. Big time bunt. You down 0-2. You talk about putting pressure on somebody, ask them to bunt in an 0-2 situation. And Alex Malazzo does it perfectly. Top of the order now, Mac Bingham. Almost 14,000 in attendance at Starkville tonight. Time is called. Top of the order up. They're going to go to the bullpen. Like we said, a lot of pitches thrown by both sides. Tyson uh, Harden did a heck of a job. On the heels of what behind it all in the 60s. So all of a sudden LSU's got to think backside here. Let the ball travel. Let it get deep to have a chance. A frisbee slider in for a strike. Tough to make this adjustment. Huh? You've been seeing 95 out of the last couple of relievers. And all of a sudden now you get a guy that's going to throw yeah. about 81, 82 miles an hour. Below the hitting speed. Shows bunt, drops one up the third base line, nicely laid down. Schulke throw to first, got him at first. What a play by the pitcher, Camp Schulke. Boy, in a game that we've seen a ton of offense, and I'm talking about 17 runs, we have seen some outstanding defensive plays, too. And you won't see a pitcher make a better play than this. This is an outstanding bump by Bingham, just kind of pushes it down. Almost a perfect bump, but a slide. And how quick did Schulke get to his feet? and just throws a dart over at first base. LSU challenging the call. Ooh, boy, that is close, huh? Yeah. Let's see if we get a better angle here. He got him. I think that's, yep, he did get him. I think the ball is in the glove, and I mean just by a toenail. Oh, what a play by Camp Schulke. That is crazy. I mean, the release is, is so quick as he gathered himself and quickly came off of the grass. 
I mean, watch this play. You talk about an athlete. Who says pitchers aren't athletes, by the way? How many pitchers can do this? <laughs> Bare hands it, and I mean a perfect dart over to first base. Pretty much everybody on a roster that's not a pitcher says a pitcher's not an athlete. <laughs> that's an heck there's of a There's some play. middle infielders. That, I'm going to tell you, there's some middle infielders can't make that play. Out. Base is confirmed. LSU is out of town. So two outs. Okay. Milam advances to third. Of the game will be true challenges. I can't imagine Tommy White's going to see anything. No. To hit here. I, I wouldn't think so. Although it's a totally different look. I just can't imagine they're going to pitch to Tommy White here. Yeah. There it is right there. I, 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 why, why would you even let him get in the batter's box? You don't. I mean, you don't. Yeah. And we talked about that. That's the one guy that can't beat you. And that's the way it's going to be for LSU until others around him begin to hit. Tommy picks up his second intentional walk. This is going to be Jake Brown here, the true freshman. Mm -hmm. Out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, coming in. Just came in defensively out in right field. Ninety-four pitches on the year so far, eighty-eight of which have been fastballs. Only four curveballs and three changeups. So, Brown trying to get some timing in. He waits on deck. Yeah, what a ball Brown. game here in Starkville. Jake Brown began the year in. The starting lineup for LSU was started off out in left field, moved over to right field for a while, then the bat kind of cooled off. Two-way player. Seems like a lot of guys are these days. Probably won't use him much on the bump, Jay Johnson said this year, just because he's left-handed in LSU. We talked about earlier, a ton of lefters, that left handers down in that bullpen. But can really run. Drafted, turned out a lot of money to come to LSU. He was a Gatorade High School Player of the Year in the state of Louisiana last year. So Dotson's ready to go. Brown settles into the batter's box. First one on the way. Fastball. Paints the outside part of the plate 0 1. Defense pretty much straight up. That is foul back. 92 in on the hands 0 2. Mississippi State has the bottom third of its order due up in the bottom of the night, trying to keep it a one-run deficit. 0-2 from Dotson. Up and away. Over 330 combined pitches thrown in this game. The 1-2. That's in the dirt. Tommy was on the move. He'll take second base rather easily. No throw. Yeah, will there be any relievers left for either team tomorrow? I have a feeling some people are going to be doubling up this weekend. <laughs> second and third, two outs. Two balls, two strikes. 9-8, LSU here in the ninth. The pitch. Cold strike three. Got him looking. And we will head seven, eight, and nine. So we start off the ninth inning. You've got a lefty lefty matchup. Pardon me, the seventh pitcher used by LSU. First pitch up and away. Ball one. Kohler. Multi-hit game, two doubles, an RBI, and a run scored. He's two for four. Transfer from Memphis, 1-0. Bouncer toward first base. Grabbed at Nockenhausen. Covering, they get the first out. One down. Yeah, really nice play on both ends right there. The big fella, Jarrett Jones, a nice shovel, just like a quarterback would lead a receiver. Pitches it right over to Ackenhausen, who barely gets the bag first. 
Fastball slider heavy for Ackenhausen. Fastball is going to average about 92. And he'll throw the slider, the second most used pitch. Occasional changeup by him. This one's popped up to shallow right field. Milam is going out. Brown is there. Two down. The Bulldogs down to the last out. These SEC games are exhausting for everybody. They, I mean, this is what you get, though, in the SEC. Johnny Long, the batter. Two outs, nobody on. That's inside. Long came in as a defensive replacement. At the start last night behind the plate, went two for five with an RBI. Here's the 1-0. Cut on a miss. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Big man looked like he slipped a little bit on delivery. Two one on the way. Long fouls it back. Bulldogs had a last strike. Johnny, Johnny. Quick conversation. But they're having uh, communication issues. I'm not sure what this is about. I felt like Ackenhausen was in a pretty good groove. Saw Malaza looking down to his wrist, but then would put down the sign. So clearly, Ackenhausen not using the uh, the receiver. The batteries on the watches may have gone out, so now we got to go back to more traditional signs. Good times, good times. All right, we're about ready to go. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Here's the pitch. Long shoots one down the line, but foul. You can see Johnny Long. He is just trying to put a ball in play. He's down two strikes. Protecting against a good fastball that Nate Ackenhausen has. He'll run it up to 93, but he's got a good changeup and breaking ball, too. So you got to respect that in a two strike situation. Chopper to the right side, gloved over at first base. And that'll do it as LSU picks up the victory tonight by the final of 9-8. to eight. Wow, what a game. And you hit the nail on the head. It's been